mind, but the owner of the oldest eatery in Fall River leads with this. Hills, Mills, and Pork Pies. Amy Johnson married into the Hartley's original Pork Pies legacy. Dating back to 1900, her husband's family took over operations directly from the Hartley family. Kevin Johnson has been filling, crimping, and baking pork pies since he was eight. We'd come to work with my dad at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays. Current day, from 4 a.m. to 2 p.m., six days a week, there's a constant hustle at Hartley's. Not too many husbands and wives can work together and live together and just, yeah, we make it go. You know? On the menu, everything from buffalo chicken to salmon, meat, and chili, savory fillings are stuffed into Hartley's signature crust. But the only variety marked with Hartley's signature H is the original pork. Nothing has changed. We follow the recipe that was handed down to us from the Hartleys. It is salt, pepper on the pork. The two pie presses in use came from England more than 120 years ago, brought over by the founder, a man who immigrated to Fall River to work in textiles. Fabric mills are what made the city a destination starting in the 1800s. Thomas Hartley did not like the mill work, so he opened up this little storefront here, and the pies were five cents. It is ironic that the vegetarian reporter is the pork pie pioneer of Chronicles, so our very talented videographer, Jen, is going to taste for us. It is amazing. You can see why it's legendary. Our best food bar. The gravy. Mm. Whether it's the gravy, the fillings, or the crust cozying it all together, customers agree there's just something about these pies and these people. I don't know what spices they use. I have to know because whatever it is, it triggers something in my brain that just makes me want more. Hi, JJ. How are you? Well, they're always happy. They're always greeting people. Come out every day, either for chicken, cherise. The chorizo pie, a nod to the flavors many Fall River residents grew up with. More than 40% trace their roots back to Portugal. I need very accurate measurements. Diogo Machado, a mural artist from Portugal known as Ad Fuel, came to Fall River as part of a street art tour. Murals, they generate conversations. It's just a, a beautiful way to bring people together in a community. Creating community and revitalizing city spaces are goals of Beyond Walls, the organization that brought mural artists in from far and near. Greg Penniston attended grade school in Fall River. You know that this piece in particular is informed by old block print patterns from textiles that were produced right down the street in the early 1900s. Founder of Beyond Walls, Al Wilson. The former industrial cities of the Commonwealth of mass development called these gateway cities, and they're really fantastic cities, right? Extremely diverse, varied architecture, which for us makes great canvases. It was Mass Inc., an independent public policy think tank that coined the term gateway city. 2007, I think, was when we did this first Gateway Cities report. Ben Foreman is executive director of their Gateway Cities Innovation Institute, created about a decade ago. To help Gateway City leaders coalesce around a shared policy agenda and elevate the idea of Gateway Cities as important places in our Commonwealth. After a period of turmoil that saw a former mayor go to federal prison for fraud and corruption, he sees good things happening in Fall River. I think the consensus is they've turned the corner. I think people feel much better about investing in the community. He notes state incentives are encouraging development. The South Coast Rail Project is underway and arts are flourishing. It's amazing what actually spray paint can do. Ashley Okino and Patty Rigo are both leaders of community organizations that collaborated on the mural project. I'm really about capitalizing on, on the momentum that we have right now. They're beautiful billboards for Fall River, and they are a celebration of culture. It's a gift to the community. It's, it's a huge gift to the community. Step into this one-of-a-kind market and experience the Portuguese influence on the community. Michael Benavides was brought to Fall River from the Azores when he was two. My folks immigrated in the 70s, 79 in fact. They came to work in Fall River like many others in factories and textiles. Michael's father, Fernando, started the family business out of his garage, importing goods from Portugal to sell wholesale. The first thing I import, I import in coffee. From the Portugal. first thing you imported was just coffee. coffee. Just looking at the 
variety of products they now sell at Portugalia is a feast for the eyes. We have everything from food products to an extensive wine selection, very fine handcrafts. Michael has been working with his father since he was a kid. If I wanted to spend any time with my father, I had to tag along with him in the truck to, you know, visit customers or deliver product. <laughs> Fernando says back then he could have never imagined how much the business would grow. Thank God uh, I, I, I was very lucky. The people, they like the things I do. Michael saying with Portugalia, they're responding to new purchasing power and interest. He sees great progress in the city. The second generation, oftentimes, they have the means that the first generation didn't necessarily have. And, and they're looking for, you know, finer goods. I think for Vizetta, it's rebounding for sure. Precision and refinement, the latest in automation, creates a product a cut above. But sometimes a truly elegant line requires a deft hand, a discerning eye. At the Matuk factory in Fall River, you find it all. No one is doing the kind of things that we're doing here in Massachusetts or really in the United States. For this kind of craftsmanship, you'd have to go overseas in Europe to places like Italy. Milton Gonzalves is vice president of operations at the Luxury Linens Company. When the industry, they would call us a cut and sew operation. We receive our fabrics from all over the world and then we convert those fabrics into all the different products that you'll see on the tour. Sheets, blankets, towels, able to be customized and embellished by hundreds of highly trained craftspeople on the factory floor. So this is a unique Matuk product that's called India, and it's using this unique machine called the Barato machine, made in Belgium. Some machines you'd have a hard time finding anywhere else. Machines from the 30s, 40s, and 50s that are now obsolete, really making highly specialized product that no one else makes. In charge of human resources, Kathy Agostinelli explains Matuk was founded in New York City in 1929. It later moved to New Bedford and then Fall River, a city with a singular resource, its people. We have long service employees who are the artisans and the craftspeople and have these specialty skills. It's been extremely interesting to see our new employees learn those skills. The craft of working with textiles is often passed down to multiple generations. It was back in the early 1800s when the first textile mills were built in Fall River, local waterways powering the industry. Nicknamed the Spindle City, more than 100 mills were in operation by the early 1900s. At one time, Fall River was the largest producer of printed cloth in the country. Fine linens that were exported all around the world. And all that industry dried up as everything went overseas after World War II. All the mill buildings that were here, most of them closed and were either razed or repurposed. But knowledge endures, says Joe Fox. He works for Merida Rugs. They design and make all of their products in Fall River. Like Matuk, Merida recognized the talent here. People who had experience with weaving and doing handwork and finish work. Like John Carvalho, who's worked with textiles for 45 years, 22 at Merida. And you're the master. That's what they call me, Master John. <laughs> master John. So what are we looking at? What kind of loom is this, John? This one right here, it's a dobby loom. What we call a dobby loom. He explains the dobby, fed by 2,000 spools of yarn, makes flat plaids. The color comes in, right? It goes this way, one rapier. Okay, what we call a rapier. You can call it a shuttle. And now it hands it off to that one there. Then you got your dobby, which are your harnesses here, that are making your weave to lock it together, to lock your color. The Jagger machine with 3,400 spools can move single strands of yarn independently, making design possibilities endless. Yeah, this one, you can make at least a 20 by 13 rope on this train. Craftsman Vichet Cragen meticulously mines the tufting machine. Run by air and needles and motors. Here, every rug is made to order. Meredith's showroom in New York City showcases products as pieces of art. Designer Gabrielle Ferreira, Fairhaven native and RISD graduate, says all the product development is done right here in Fall River. Every year we make about two to three collections. We make everything 
to the space that the designer requests. That idea of knowing where your products came from, who made them, the source of the materials. Lots of companies that make things, they might design them in the U.S., but then they'll ship the manufacturing overseas. Well, everyone here is touching every aspect of the product. So when you get that product and it's on your floor, you know exactly where it came from and who made it. Back to that who? So we're surging the rug. Manny Souza is production manager, born and raised in Fall River. Well, I worked at Quaker Fabric for a number of years. I've seen the city of Fall River do a whole 180. We would love to see more businesses like Merritt come to the city of Fall River because we are talented people down here.